which will raise the community as a whole. That's what this thing is about. It's about right talk, leading the right thinking, leading the right action, and hopefully we'll do the right thing and everyone will benefit from it. On my left is my sometime sidekick, Kennard Wright. On my right is my <laughs> guest. His name is Demetrius Snell. I just met Demetrius. Hey, Demetrius, how you doing? Right. This is my first time shaking his hand. I just met this man. I talked to him a couple times on the phone, but uh, I never met him in person until now. And the first thing that kind of surprised me was he's actually shorter than me, and there's not a lot of people like that. He he's, reminds me I mean, of my law school buddy James Francois. He's tall in stature in terms of how you think. He yeah. tall. Oh, y'all yeah, been chatting before I got here, obviously. Anyway, Demetrius is a Republican commentator. He's appeared on the communist station El Al Jazeera. <laughs> we want to talk about that. And uh, Demetrius and I, Demetrius and I both. Demetrius is an officer with. MLK Chapter in Houston. Mm -hmm. And what you do there? Um, I am over public relations for the MLK Association in the Houston chapter. Okay, and you work with R.W. Bray, right? Yes, sir. I do too. I'm, I'm kind of like a Bray surrogate in, in, yes. in Austin, anywhere else. And uh, as a matter of fact, I want to mention offhand before I forget in, in, in the middle of this show that there's going to be a uh, Republican Party of Texas auxiliary meeting on Wednesday. And Demetrius may be speaking there. Or son, yes. he, he doesn't know what he's going to do yet because yes. Bray's on the fly like that. <laughs> but hopefully, I know it. Demetrius will be there and I'll be there. And I've recruited Corey Tabor. He's supposed to be doing saying a prayer. Oh, and so we'll see how that goes. Uh, we're going to talk about some things today. Demetrius, first of all, say you're a Republican commentator. How did that happen? Long story. Um Give us the short version. Well, social media. Social media, um, well, I've been a, a Republican since I was 17 years old. Um, I did a lot of, you know, a, a lot of work when I was in South Florida just with um, local Republicans. Um, I got into wanting to do more, you know, with TV and speaking out. One day I was on my social media talking about the election and I got hit up by the Al Jazeera and it started from there. They actually contacted me through my social media, um, and they wanted me to speak. I appeared on the show about three or four times now. Um, I've been on a couple of radio sh radio shows. Um, so they jump on you hard? Not, not really. I, I can hold my own pretty good. I did some radio things with a guy out of uh, Dallas for a short back for a short while back in 2008. Mm -hmm. And boy, they used to call in and jump on me like I stole something from their mom. Listen, I'm I'm used to that. Um, that's been me since I was in. I went to a, a HBCU. And I was one of the few black Republicans at my HBCU, so I had to learn to hold my own. Where'd you go to school? Well, I you know went to Florida Moore University. To, uh, Morris Brown. There we go. There we go. Preet, see how that worked? Oh, you know what? <laughs> the, you got, I'm sitting between two HBCUs, and I went to uh, Denison University. Mm -hmm. You may have heard of that. White Central. White Central. I, I, I mean, I, and I went to Florida State, too. You went to Florida well. State? That's a good so, school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got in there. I didn't have time to go there. Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't know how close it was to Fame. Oh, okay, no, you said you've been to a. Uh, you said you've been into Republican conservative politics since you were seventeen. Mm -hmm. What about you, Kennard? You, Kennard is a recent convert, more or less. Well, probably more recent. Um, I was telling him before. I think values. I think are always consistent. Um, but I think at some point you have to basically line up your values with like how you act. Um. I really stopped uh, kind of the way you would say being on the plantation in 08, um, uh, Democratic precinct person and all that. But at the end of the day, um, it came down to my values. I started voting what I believed in and stopped voting whatever I thought or was taught. And so really it just came down. And literally when I heard the president, the former president speak, um, that I just I just had to make a change, not to be disrespectful because it's momentous to have a black man in office, 
but I didn't see anything in that person or that party that was consistent with my values as a person and specifically as a Christian. And so that's that's when I really changed. And that was very difficult because, again, uh, I'll talk politics all day. I like helping people. I, I like uh, trying to help somebody improve their life. But really, it just came down to that. And then, uh, honestly, I probably really just, I would vote a certain way. I vote more conservative. But I, I didn't, I wanted to vote for, um, for Ben Carson last year. So that was why I voted in the primary. I had voted the same way for about the last eight years. I just didn't identify with the party in terms of a primary. Uh, but I was like, well, you know, I, um, I know he's getting flack today, but I, I just felt that at the time uh, he had the best values that lined up with my faith as a believer. So I was going to vote consistent with that. And so that's when I, I guess I became more formal. But, but again, it goes back to I, I went to a church where a lot of people were conservative and they would laugh and say, well, Democrats could be, they need help too. But again, uh, you know, I kind of had to vote what I believed in. And um, but like when we were uh, with that CNN thing right, right. or whatever, um, even then, you go on national TV, uh, how you go, are you going to identify as nonpartisan or are you going to identify as how you vote? Well, there's a lot of pressure in the black community to, to even even if you vote, uh, yeah. well, you know, you, are you going to be a man or a boy? Are you going to take, you going to be able to say what you believe? Mm -hmm. And so, really, for me, it was just voting ultimately consistent with my values. And to me, that was the most important thing. So, the love of history, the love of black people, you know, like your book here, none of that changed. It just the thing that changed was like, hey, if I'm going to be a mature believer, I need to be voting more consistently with what. With, exactly. with, with, with who I am and what the word says. Not to say Republicans aren't he, he, perfect. He, he hit you on something. Uh, yeah, uh, um, because I, th I think that's the problem with a lot of African Americans within our community is that they feel, oh, because you are a Republican and you vote Republican that you don't have the best interest of African American community. When in actuality, I always tell people, the African American community, we, we have seen them put Democratic people in, in office, in the seat for the last 40 years, and our communities are worse off today than they were 40, 50 years ago. So at some point, you have to come to an agreement within yourself and as a community and start looking other places, because clearly we can see that the Democratic Party isn't where it's at, or they're not trying to help us. They come to our community, and I wrote a piece on this, I wish I would have got it to you. But it was basically hinting as to why the black community stayed home this time around. Because we saw in 2008 how the black community came out in droves and voted the first African-American president in. I mean, people didn't see African-Americans vote like that in forever yep. or never. That was like 90, okay. what, 95, 96 <laughs> Exactly. But the, but the thing is... It was Afri somewhere it was good. Yeah, but the thing is African-Americans saw what the Democratic Party really was. You only come to us when it's election year, mm. and you tell us what you what we want to hear. But when we come to you after the election is over, with mm. our hand out or asking, you know, you know, how could we work together? You well, close the door. Well, here, here's the other yeah. thing: when when I was about to become president of the local Democratic organization in 2008, uh, I, I, I dropped that for what I just said. But here's what they they would do exactly what you said. And so they, they would come around four to eight months before the election, they smile and wave at you, and they would be gone. And what I found was that they would come in and they would do the same things that they said the other side did, mm -hmm. and they would roll out. Exactly. And so I think what's to your, to your point of your article is that now I had a friend who years ago when I told him I didn't support uh, Obama, oh, man, you're not being nice, you're going to do something. I said, man... He's just, he's just a smooth talker. He's not really going to do nothing to help us. That guy came to me about two years ago and said, Ken, and don't ever call me Ken. Please don't ever call me Ken. He <laughs> said, Ken, he said, you were right. My point is him, and I can't tell you how many, at least several other black people I know, they won't say it publicly. You know what? We didn't get what we, we expected. Get what we expected to get. And I told them. I got caught. One lady stopped, called me, uh, stopped, didn't want me to date her niece who she just introduced yeah. me to, mm -hmm. Uncle Tom, Sambo, and I'm like, the house, house, whatever. The whole point is like people realize like, hey, and to some extent, hey, this isn't getting us what we expected. And and, and but I'm afraid that the paradigm it needs to like we were saying before we started. You have you had your Booker rights and you mm -hmm. had your Du Bois people or whatever. Right. You have people in different sets, and 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 and, and, and unfortunately they realize that it's a set of beans. But you know what? I don't like Donald Trump or I don't like the Republicans. Okay. 
It's not about who you like. It's like Malcolm said, and I'm t I, I like getting people with mm -hmm. this one now. He, in 64, you find a video, he said, don't trust a white liberal. Not that white people are bad, pastors are white, I had a problem with white people, but the point is, be discerning in how you vote. You go to them, and he said this literally mm -hmm. at least two or three times. He said, hey, look, you know what? You go and tell them what you want, and whoever gives you what you want, the closest thing to it, you vote for them. Right. If people were being wise, they would go to the current president, Republicans, or whatever. And I've told, I've tried to tell, again, I'm not, I don't, I have, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily have, have your ear or whoever's ear or whatever. I'm not worried about that. But the point is, go do it. I agree with you what, there. What I you agree with do? you there because I always tell people, the first off rip, I wasn't, I'm not the biggest Donald Trump supporter at all. But the fact that he's there, you want something done, go send your legislation. Send the CBC, <laughs> Congressional oh. Black Caucus. Y'all want something, all, go. All, all they're going to do is send a letter. And, and see what, and see what you're going to send gonna, a see, letter. See what he will give you. <laughs> if, that, if he don't give you nothing, if you send something there and he don't do it, then that's what? that then that's yeah. the, that's that's strike one. Then we know, right? Exactly. What we know where he stands with us. But if you ain't sending nothing there, then hey. then you have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. If you don't have anybody trying to go walk to the White House or go into the White House and meet with this man, they're too scared. They ain't got the guts. But for what? Well, what are but, we scared? But, but of? I mean, you have a whole community that you're trying well, to. No, he, you have a whole community I, that you're you're fighting for. But then, the, the, and you, you mean to tell me that you're scared to do re it? Respectfully. Uh, are we sure they're fighting for the whole community? Well, they're that's the thing. They're fighting themselves. for themselves. There you go. Yeah. Well, we, we, well, we, well, we know that. It's, it's, the, whole, it's the whole talented 10th yeah. thing going on. And that's been going on you, since uh, W.E.B. Du Bois. And they try to call us the House Negroes. Yeah, we know who the House Negroes but, are. But, but it's, like, it's, like, it's like they And they support Planned Parenthood and all the other garbage that's killing our community. Okay, we know about Margaret Sanger. But, uh, uh, but so they sent a letter to Trump, and then that's it. So, okay, so if I'm representing you and I got 45, 50 people, I'd have a fool, a person, respectfully. Fool is uh, just a, a general term, a euphemism or whatever. I would have somebody up there every day or every mm -hmm. week. So if right. you want to get something, Calling. how do we get through enslavement? We kept on pushing. Right. So now in the last 30 years, oh, we sent the letter. Really, that's it? You yeah. sent the letter. Now, getting back, back to something you said, Demetrius. Mm -hmm. Great. I met Bray. Bray and I met. He stayed ex one extra day in Austin. We met. And he and I, a couple of months ago, we were, we were on the, uh, he was on the uh, Alex, Alex West. Oh, yeah. I went out to Alex the studio West. with him. Mm -hmm. We went out there. And uh, it's kind of, you know, Bray is kind of, you know, he's right. doing some, trying to get some things done. We're trying to do some, some new things. I'm looking at, I am probably the biggest unknown Trump supporter in the nation. For real. Mm -hmm. When he was coming down the elevator, I have a good, a client in Florida, she's making jokes about him. Talking, he can't be Hillary. I said, I bet you $100. I said, I bet you $100. Oh, no, no. I, I said, knew. I bet you $100. Listen, I knew that. I'm still trying to collect my money. I knew that. Well, you Listen, that you, can money. Money. Uh, you can, you can go money. back on the You can go back on the Al Jazeera, and I told them that he was going to win the primary. And they everybody looked at me like I was crazy. But I was like, he has mm. the people behind him. Now, the, the, the general... Ca uh, campaign I wasn't too sure about. I was a little ner I was nervous because mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. But I knew he was going to win that primary okay. just based off of the the yeah. people that was there. I'm like everybody's looking for a real change and nobody wants to nobody wants to put a bush back in office. Marco Rubio, you done, you you were the poster child of conservatism up until about 2010, 2012 when you decided to go do what you did and that drawed a lot of people away from you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I was a Kasich supporter. To be completely really? honest, yeah, I was a Kasich supporter, okay. but okay. I on, honestly, once I once it. we okay. got, you know, about five, six states in, I was like, okay, this man is gonna win. I put mm. my money on Trump coming but, down, to, coming down the escalator because mm. I just <clears throat> felt that I just felt something that I felt, and, mm. and the later things played out the way I figured they play yeah. out. I said. He's not a Republican darling. He's nobody's darling. Nobody nope. really wants him. Mm -hmm. nope. He's fighting the Republicans. He's fighting, you know, he's fighting, right. he's fighting, he's scrapping for that. It's like, it's like a competition. Mm -hmm. it, it, my baby brother, who has a PhD in a, well, adult education and philosophy, whatever the heck, he's in North Carolina. He used to laugh. He used to call me every day. You don't even call me anymore. Because mm -hmm. I was right and he was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he, can't, he can't handle it. But that's, that's fine. The thing is, what Trump did was, 
the result of competition. He won the competition. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And what <laughs> I knew against I knew Hillary, I didn't think I knew Hillary couldn't out campaign him because Hillary had a hard time with an avowed socialist. Mm -hmm. Right. She had trouble with Bernie Sanders. Right. Well, they had to cheat him for her to beat him. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you know what? Oh, so, I, oh, I always tell people, I'm like, the biggest mistake the Democratic Party made was not giving their their voters what they wanted. That was their biggest mistake. Was when they decided to cheat the, the cheat the man out of out of the election, and then when when all of that stuff started coming out, and they found out that stuff really happened that wasn't supposed to happen. People were doing things that they weren't supposed to do, and that and to me that honestly was the downfall of one of the downfalls of the Democratic Party. That's like one of the, because I follow politics from the Republican side, independent mm -hmm. side, to the, to the Democratic side, because I just want to be able to, I need to have my speaking points ready when I have to mm -hmm. talk about them. And that's one, that that Bernie Sanders situation was one of the reasons why I knew she wasn't, I knew she didn't have a possibility, because then you had Jill Stein, and you had, a, you had mm -hmm. um, all of those Bernie or bus mm -hmm. people. And once those Bernie or bus people, once I saw that those Bernie or bus people were there, and then you start seeing that, she, I, you know, once I kind of realized that she didn't go to Wisconsin, or she didn't go to Michigan. And I'm like, you don't realize that just because you, this person won that, don't mean that you a shoe in for it. Mm -hmm. See, and they thought Obama owned black people. Yeah, no, no, and no, they made a lot of my 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 um <laughs> my article talked about that too. Don't send the because we black people love the Obamas. We love the Obamas. We don't know you, Hillary. So you sending them out there. You need to send yourself out there. Don't. I love Beyonce. I'm a big Beyonce fan out of this world. But don't send Beyonce out there to talk politics because mm -hmm. Beyonce is for entertainment. Don't think that you sending Beyonce out there is go woo the black community. No, we go go to that free concert. And then we go stay home <laughs> later that's, on. That's right. That's because that's what basically happened. what happened. And I was like, that's where Democrats get it wrong. Don't throw us celebrities because right now we're suffering as a as a population of people. Our children are still in crappy schools. Right. Our children, you know, we we see our kids come out of uh, colleges and they can't even get a job. My best friend, you know, we graduated from college, but. I don't even want to tell my age, but we graduated back from college, 2011, <laughs> 2012, and she she got her degree in psychology, and she still has yet to to find any job in psychology. Mm -hmm. Okay, here, you know we we have we have communities in shambles, families in shambles, the institutions in our communities in are shambles. not serving right. the communities. Like, and I'm talking about specifically about churches. I don't think they're serving. The oh, they're, I, I don't, the way I don't feel. Yeah, I don't feel that. They way. don't even work together. Yeah. Because I'm like, you have all of these churches in the black community. You have the Baptist, you have the Kojic. And I'm like, instead of you guys coming together to help the community, you guys are, you saturate, you take away from the community, but you don't really put as much as you should. And they're like, oh, well, we do community service and we give this scholarship out. I'm like, that pales in comparison to that woman who was in your tr congregation for 20 years and gave $500 every month, and then you want to give her child a $5,000 scholarship. $5,000 compared to $500 a month for the 20 years don't add up to, to $5,000. Well, the other thing is, I've talked to a minister here in Austin, mm -hmm. and he was trying to get the ministers in Austin to bank at one place. And they couldn't oh, even do that. He couldn't even get that done. I know who you're talking about. But see, the, here's the deal. is the, the First, what you said earlier, uh, black people in terms of how we stayed at home, Black people do show that they can have some discernment about who mm -hmm. to vote for. Right. We're just not willing to take it all the way out. Mm -hmm. As far as churches, I told you on the first or second show when I sat here, I said, well, 75, 85% of the churches are not doing what it says by scripture. Right. And even in terms of as a focal point of action, because churches used to be the focal point of the action of the change in the community. And the only thing churches are often changing now is maybe the you know, the, the, the dates on, on, on outside <laughs> of the church. And again, I believe strongly in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, what the Spirit do, tongue talking, you know, all that. But at the end of the day, Jesus Jesus said that, you know, you should help the least among you when you can. Jesus showed you that you will, um, he wasn't afraid to go up in the bars and hang out Listen, with the Listen, I was about to but, say that. But no, no I'll, I'll finish yeah. up with you go. I'm just saying the church is at the end of the day, if they would just do a little bit more of what they were called to do per the scripture, instead of what they want to do per the deacon's board or grandmamas, whoever, then you would see a, a, a different change. You wouldn't just see the change in, in the black America. You would see a change in, in America, America period. Because you'll allow God to come in and do what he needs to do. Oh, no, you're just doing what you want. And what happens when people do what they want? You're out of alignment. When you're out right, of alignment, right. the equation is jacked up. 
<laughs> they get and golden the cows and things like golden that. Golden cows, and, and, and you wind up just talking about, oh, well, we support God. We love God. Oh, whoa, Planned Parenthood. Hold up. Well, oh, you know, so are you going to honor what you think, or are you going to honor the God that you serve? Did you see my Mafra series at all? Mm. I, I would one? urge no, each of you to see that. There's a, there's a video I have, Mafra 21. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll tell you all about Planned Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger, and how Jesse Jackson flipped for money. Mm. That makes Gross. sense. I mean, it breaks it, all, it breaks it all down really, really mm. good. But my thing in terms of politics, I started working in politics my first job in politics was working in a Democratic campaign with uh, Bill Oliver. Bill mm -hmm. Oliver was uh, Jimmy Carter's campaign, presidential campaign manager in Texas. He used to run a lot of campaigns in Houston. Mm -hmm. I worked on Mickey Leland's campaign, who was the Democratic congressman, in 1982. Mm -hmm. So I started on the other side, much as you did. Mm -hmm. But then, even when I was working on that side, they told me, well, Mike, we know you're a GD Republican, mm -hmm. you know? Because I ain't on that funny stuff, right? And because, you know, a man is a man, and I don't care what you think you choose, I know you're out of your mind. I think that back when they, when they declassified homosexuality from being a disease back in 1955, it's been going downhill since. That, along with school prayer. They took, school prayer, prayer. They took, they took prayer out and bought, and bought the police in. Mm -hmm. That's what's happened. And... I worked at a, uh, I'm, so I'm certified to teach middle school English language arts and reading, and I worked at a uh, Wallace Institute in Houston for a while with the TSU mm -hmm. campus, the all -ma the back all-male boys school over there. My, and my, my baby brother tells me, he, t he even tells me, he says the young black men need a little more structure. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. It seems, and it seems to me to be played out just in life, not because he said it, but because a lot of guys, when they go to prison, they come out, damn the expert chess players. They come out with degrees and stuff like that. The black guys who take advantage of the situation, yeah, um, because they yeah. have a structure, have structure in that in that in that program. Well, mm -hmm. I, I always tell people that's why I always I'm a firm believer in having strong educators inside of inner city schools. Because I'm like, a, a, you can you can have all the content knowledge that you want, but if you don't have the structure, if you don't have the voice or the backing or the power to because a black kid, a black African, uh, African American male, especially a male, needs a strong figure because a lot of the times they don't have it at home. Right. Um, I had a I had a young man who's I, we had parent parent um, teacher night last week on Thursday, and one of the parents came and she was like, "I see that the change in my child because you've been here." Mm -hmm. He's like, "Because basically whatever it is that you're doing with him, I want you to continue that." This is an eighth grader. Kid's smart. The kid is bright as ever. But he, you could see that he was going right. down the wrong path because he was hanging with the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And then they didn't have a strong teacher in there before me. So as a teacher, you have a different role. You, right. you, you play more than one role exactly. than a role as a teacher. As a teacher, a lot of the times we play the teacher, the counselor, sometimes the big brother, mm -hmm. or the father right. figure. The uncle. <laughs> the uncle, somebody, somebody inside of the class. We're more than just a teacher inside of the classroom, especially in inner cities. Mm -hmm. there's, been t there's been times where I've, you know, I taught in Miami, and one of my students, their, their parents would call me and be like, you know, such and such is acting crazy right now in college. I need you to give him a call because he, he ain't listening to me. And I have to call the kid and be like, well, what's the problem? Because, you know, that's mm -hmm. not how I taught what's you. Right. That's, not yeah. what I to that's not what I told you to do when you ca got up here to fam you. Your yeah. job was to come up here, play football, get an education. And he got it got it right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times, and that goes back to, I know we're about to get on education, but that goes back to the educational piece of black male teachers in the classroom, not just in high school, but in middle school and elementary, because those kids need to see that. They I'd need like, to see like that to course. That because there's one thing that, that I, be I believe this. Mm -hmm. I believe that one of the answers for us in the black community is to take control again of our own institutions. Beginning mm -hmm. with education, I believe we should have black charter schools. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's just what I oh, believe. Yeah. Can, can, I'm, me, and I'm not me, saying to be segregated. I'm saying that because yeah. to give young black men the best chance. But you know one thing that we need to do in addition to that, and he, he said it, is that whether um, when my parents split, my best friend's father uh, and mother were, were archetypes, right? So uh, even though we obviously need to take control of our schools, 
people need to try to help the people that's in their community. It takes Cause, a village. Because it used to be, there was a young guy at work, and he came in, he dressed like a T-shirt, and he, I'm like, man, um, yeah, you might not want to wear that to work. Well, I can do what I want. Well, man, I'm trying to get you full-time. What am I doing? Uh, my, when my parents split, I, I had those two people to serve as my archetype. That man showed me how mm -hmm. to tie a tie. He had no responsibility. He bought me clothes. The point is, is that, yes, I, know, I completely agree with most of everything you could ever say on education, mm -hmm. but the larger thing is where I can, when I can, I take responsibility. So if I'm out there in the community, a uh, teacher, I, I don't do what you do. At least I haven't done that a long time, even though that's a natural thing. But you know what? I don't have to necessarily be a teacher. That when I see that young boy, <laughs> then I'm going to go in and help him. And, and that's what I think is missing is that in the education and uh, community in general is simply that, hey, you know what, 400 years of enslavement, what did we do? We looked at everybody on the plantation, everybody down the street, and the last 30 or 40 years, uh, in some respects because of democratic policy, some respects because of whatever, we basically have lost our sense of identity in terms of I'll help any black child. Right. And see, that's the, uh, right. and I and I want to know where that breakdown came, where community. we lost that's that. Yeah, where did we lose that? Because clearly, if you look at prior to the '80s, the black, the African American community was a community. We were a family. You knew not to, you knew not to speak out of turn to your next door neighbor, because you knew if you, you spoke, might, you might get tightened up. You, there and then right, you might get, get tightened up when you get, get home. home. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So where did where did we drop the ball? When did we as a community stop caring about each other and only caring about ourselves? Because that's what it is right now. As, Here, here's as what I think. Now, what's happened is you've had liberal policies and practices that have interfered in our relationship. My wife, who's my producer, at one point, she, she, when she went through a divorce, she wanted to get a smaller apartment unit that she could afford more easily. But they told her that she could had to get a two-bedroom because she had a boy and a girl, and the boy and the girl couldn't sleep in the same room. Mm -hmm. So she had to get a more expensive apartment. That makes no sense. That's, true. That's social engineering. Because and I grew, I can, I grew up in I a home. I, I had seven brothers and three sisters I mean, I had two in a three-bedroom house. You might sleep three, in a, in a full-size bed. You might sleep three in the bed. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, you, you know, know it's things like that. You know that, that like I say, these policies interfere with our communal organization. I used to sleep in bed, my, my brother, me and my brother John and Frank used to sleep in the bed. I was in Lewis, I sleep in the middle. I just, <laughs> just put the kids where I right? My brother John, he, he always says, Torrance Pilgrim, you, you'll see him on Facebook, on my Facebook page sometimes. Yeah. He says, Mikey, he said, we, you didn't, we didn't have room for you, you just should fit in where you could, you know. He said, I might be sleeping at night, man, I feel some up against me. He said, oh, it's Michael. Because he didn't have a bed for me. Right. Mm -hmm. But, in sleeping two, three in a bed like that, you develop a certain closeness and a certain relationship with your brothers and sisters that you take with you mm -hmm. when I leave the house. Yeah. I, ha I have good friends <coughs> now that, I, that my best friend, I've lost my best friend last October 2nd, but there's a love that, that, we, that, that, we, that, we, mm -hmm. that we develop as a human being yeah. from our relationships and our family that's been disrupted. You know, and, and, I, and that's I, what it is. It's the love that's missing. Yeah. I would say different things in society clearly have uh, interfered. Uh, uh, things that like Daniel, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, what, what a lot of the policies he recommended. Um, and you're right, there is some uh, social engineering. Uh, at, I would also say that at the same time, for that reason, we've uh, even you could even say uh, people as they gain affluence, they used to be in the black community. It was an integrated community, right? Yeah. right. Integrated in the sense that so that if I we lived in Section Eight, my friends down the street, well, their parents That's would be still together. Right. They're still middle class, mm -hmm. and we had moved out of the middle class into the poor class or whatever. So there was an integration. And now when we kind of move on up, I'm not saying we gained, um, we became anglicized, but 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 we, we when we move when we move out and move up, we don't look back. And so it's like there's a, you hold society responsible. Just say, hey, w at what point do do we have to hold ourselves responsible and say, I need to be looking to give back. So to, a job mm -hmm. opened up at work, and I'm walking around, and not just black people, but particularly 
Well, I shouldn't say that. Well, anyway, a job opened up at work because this is public access. But anyway, uh, but I, uh, and I'm just saying, hey, how can I help you? Do you need help with your resume? They can't do mm -hmm. nothing for me, most of the people I'm asking. They can't do nothing for me. But what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Let me help you right. with your resume. Right. There's no value that's coming to me. I'm not getting a fee. I already got a full-time job. They trying to get, but I'm trying to help. But see, that's the service. But then again, that that leads back to where the black used to be people wanting to help you for little to nothing. Now everybody wants to help you, but they want something in return. Mm. But they don't realize that you helping this kid with his resume is going to help him become a better person in the future. It may help him help somebody. Exactly. Mm. But that, that's we, a we have a thing that's that we a, that's like focus. Pay, pay it forward. Right. What mm -hmm. I'm doing for you right now, you don't have to pay me. But when yep. you, but when you get the, the knowledge or you get the money, mm -hmm. say for instance, I give you a five thousand dollars. I give you five thousand dollars to go go off to school. Okay, you go off to school. I don't want it in. I don't want it in return. What I want you to do is, when you get the money, you do the you same thing for, for the else. next person who needs it. Mm -hmm. We don't have that anymore. That's why I say we've, we've lost our sense of community. Yeah. And, we, and, and we have. And see, if you look at anything, any prism, any prism of, um, of music or dance or faith or culture, there were things that bound us together. When you're talking about the church, when you're talking about a sense of family, there's, we, don't, we don't have that, uh, that, adhesive, that adhesive agent anymore. And, and so the, the, the only thing that binds us together is music, and that's not certainly going to do anything positive for us in many respects. You're not playing Public Enemy of the Black, the Lost Poets, or nothing. You're not playing Gail Scott Heron. You're, you're playing Little Uzi or Weezy or Jabajeezy or, you know, whoever. You're playing something, <laughs> some, playing some kind of character, caricature. And one of those things is actually stick. I think it's a little wheezy. A little and wheezy. Guy, yeah, and he does sound like he's wheezing, too. Oh, yeah. He does. You know, but... But I'm saying, I'm just saying, people, let's be responsible for each other. Uh, the same way I would help my daughter, my, my dad was a teacher, so for 30, 40 years, he, he, he seemed like he was helping someone sometimes more than his own kids. But you know what? His gift wasn't just in his children. His gift or his blessing was in the other people. And so that when I go in and whether I'm a teacher or not, I'm looking at that the same way as I view being here as like, you're, it's a gift. Like, how can I give you something that helps you? And so that... When you do exactly what you said, it's irrespective of a party, and then you understand when you're doing that, you're not worried about Democrat or Republican. You're worried in terms of how you help your people. It's about what's right. It's about and, what's and, right. And we get lost. We realize, well, oh, if you got an R behind your name or a D behind your name, you're good or bad. No. Yeah. Quality of their character will yeah. give you indication as to what the, if you can trust I'm, them. I'm ready for us to become Americans again. I, I think, I think yeah. George, George Washington back when he gave his farewell address said it best. He said that uh, dividing our country based off of political parties would be the downfall of our country. And clearly, we kind of see that starting to happen because we see people with now, they have a party loyalty instead of a loyalty to American citizens. Man, let me tell you something. And that goes, that? That goes- Being that, black and being a Republican and announcing it is one of the most dangerous things oh, you can yeah. do. Trust me. That's why I don't come on that often. No, well, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I stand. No, I'm no, gonna, no. I'm no gonna, I, 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 well, what well, I told you is like I just like to participate. I like to talk. Uh, I'm a, I'm a talk and you're a thinker. And but, but what you said earlier about many of our boys, or, or girls for that matter, I talked to my daughter and we were debating something. I said I know you're a thinker because you're my child. Many of our children are thinkers. They're doers. But if you don't know who you are, it's like your faith in Christ. If you don't know who you are in that identity then you'll never walk in it. And so if I, if, when you look at this book, I don't think I've seen this book that he has the Browder Files since college, but as soon as I saw it, I knew what it was about because I was exposed to it. I would, my dad would, mom would teach, teach us things, so I had identity to learn. So my daughter has identity to learn. If you don't know who you are, if you don't know about Kemet or the, the you know, if mm -hmm. you don't know about whatever, right. if you don't know about Timbuktu, I'm not saying they're all, and even if you don't know the fact that Africans sold other Africans to get into slavery or whatever, you need to know the entirety of who you are to be able to move forward. Most of us don't know who we are outside of, you know, Beyonce, Sister Solange, or whatever her that, name is. See, see what you guys are talking about. That's why I say we need, I believe we What's need that? black charter schools. I just believe that. 
something about things just make well we well and we've in. seen we've seen black charter schools in Chicago that have a hundred percent graduation rate mm -hmm. with all of their their male boys going off placement to rates college. too placement yeah. rates yeah uh, they just they had just did a story over what over the last summer about the school um, I can't even think of I the name I know the school you're talking but about yeah it was yeah. a school in Chicago every year for every last year five, so the last five, five years. years they all of their student their um, young men have gone off to to um to college and I think that's one of my goals. One of my goals is it's not just for black males, but it's for black uh, students. Like I want it to I want to start a charter school for African American students who are gifted, and I mean like yes. intelligent. Because I feel like the get our gifted kids a lot of the times get pushed away, or they get. I've seen kids with bright intelligence get kicked out of gifted, get kicked out of honors because the honors teacher who may not look like them can't control the kids, right. can't control the kid. They but you have like, to mm -hmm. learn mm -hmm. that honor students or gifted children, period, especially black kids, they talk a lot. So you may not be able to shut them up, but sometimes it's because gifted kids are always right. thinking, they, so they, they, they always they, they need to talk. They exactly. It's like you're talking about one thing where well, I got that already, so you got to give me something exactly. else. Exactly. Yeah. I can't stay on this for too long. Now, I have, and and I if have you do that, there's a synergy involved have, when I you have, have those <coughs> kids all in the same place. I have, exactly. a, good, I have a good friend in Dallas. Very much. That runs uh, a w a w b Fellowship Leadership Institute. Mm. It's a school. It's a char black charter school with waiting lists. And it's very successful and very good. And they, because I kind of laughed last year when they came down here. And they came down here from Dallas. And they were looking for, trying to get a legislative appropriation of some sort, and they led off with the prayer. And I thought, hmm, do they know that's banned in schools? <laughs> and what, what, I, what I'm afraid is happening, because I have some theories about black people as far as politics goes, and I see them on Facebook all the time, start all kind of arguments. Yeah, you sure do. So I start all kind of good stuff. But I learn good stuff. I learn what, they, what they're yeah. thinking or not thinking. Mm, yeah, good. Time and what, There's what, a method to the madness. What I know, what, what I know mm -hmm. has, it's like, it's like a laboratory for me. I know. I know. I see and, you. I see and, you experiment. And, 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 and what I'm doing is, uh, at some point, maybe someone will say, wait, why am I saying this? Because they've been taught to hate their brother. For being different. For thinking different. Yeah. Yeah. And well, if you can be well, taught to hate your brother, you can be taught to hate yourself. Well, if you, if you can be taught to hate your brother, the, me the, the methodology behind that is it, once I divide you, you're easy to rule over. Right. Exactly. If, you're de if, if, if you don't realize that there's commonality between left and right, when I'm talking online or in person, and you start talking, this one guy started talking about... Um, Which one, uh, Lofel? No, Lofel? He, he started uh, talking about King Leopold of Belgium. I said, oh, great. You know about King Leopold and what he did to the Congo. The whole point is like, we still have commonality of knowledge, even though we may have difference of opinion in regards to politics. So we can talk all day on history. See, and I think that's the issue with most blacks on the R side and most blacks on the D side. And instead of them trying to work together to kind of get what they need to get across, they're too busy fighting each other with the rest of the political political party. They but will they the, will fight you hard. And they'll fight the white. Actually, yeah. they, they will. But see, that's 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 erroneous. That don't make sense because. You know, if you look at, the, just historically speaking, before K King and Malcolm, when they both died, they were coming to a point where they had more synergy together. Same thing with W.E.B. Du Bois and, and Booker I, T. I, I, Washington. I didn't, I didn't go back that far yet, but the, it, it, the people, people had the, the They didn't the, call the, each other names. No, but that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> name, the name is important, but it's almost like I said before we got started the show, don't get lost in your emotions. Let's not sing a song right. about being lost in our emotions. Let's go ahead and identify it. Look, okay, if I'm black and you're black, let's say we want to make sure that um, uh, the one thing we got from the previous administration, the, the crack and heroin guidelines, the one thing we definitely got, mm -hmm. the one thing in eight years. Anyway, but the one thing that we got, okay, well, what do we have in common that we need to work on? Because if we mm -hmm. do, do you understand, there's a, the, the, we can do it from both ways. So don't just talk about T Tim Scott from South Carolina because he's black Republican, mm -hmm. idiot. No, before Camilla Harris, and I think she's really like Indian, black American or something, mm -hmm. you only really got one senator, so you might want to kind of work with people. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, don't don't disparage Alan West when he was right. there because he d agreed differently. Guess what? He had an air of different people you ain't have. So what is that word called? Consensus. Mm -hmm. Let's come together and build a consensus around one or two issues and move forward. And see what because we that's how, that, that's yeah. Because if you do that, then you're moving forward throughout time. You're not held static by administration. You're thinking, right. that's the whole point of knowledge, when you say, hey, 
you know what, Africa is the mother of Western civilization, right. great. But you know why? They attain knowledge and information that lasted and went beyond their generation. Mm -hmm. We can't attain knowledge and information that are going to last beyond 8.40 in the evening on March the 6th. We can't think past yeah, one I, week. I got, I got buddies from Houston. I see Lonnie, Lefty. And not not dog so much, but Lonnie and Lefty. Mm -hmm. They're mad because Trump has, has uh, Steve Bannon and his staff. So I think a man who has a Steve Bannon on his staff and a man who has a Ben Carson on his staff and a man who can talk to Don King and a man who can talk to... He's Steve looking Harvey at he's Lincoln. looking at everybody. I'm looking at at least he's, he's looking at everybody at a, in the room. He's looking at a, all Americans. That's what I think. And, that's and, what and to, some people kind of miss me, out on. If he's on. supposed to be this good, this this hell of a deal, make it like to make deals. Damn it, why not make a deal? Maybe he's trying to make a deal. Because because at the end of the day, uh, remember Frederick Douglass said, "Power concedes nothing without demand." I was telling some friends that I said we haven't demanded anything. Right. We haven't demanded anything of either party. And, and at the end of the day, if if if, if, if you have to understand how the dynamic of power works in a political, economic, or social sense. You have to have a plan, and we're, 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 again, I'm not trying to be disparaging about my, my people, but you're still caught up in what you don't like. I don't, I'm not concerned about my feelings. My feelings are ephemeral, they last, they go away. Right. I'm concerned about, okay, what do you need? Right. If somebody's, if people are locked up too much, meaning too much, meaning on the one hand, some of the, uh, some of the, uh, some of the policies as a prison industrial complex, okay, but on the other hand, you know what? Maybe we should actually understand that our kids actually need, what did you say earlier? <laughs> Leadership structure. Structure. Yeah. structure. Maybe we should teach them you don't want to be out hanging out at two in the morning just sitting around because that may kind of lead to something. So the whole point is <laughs> but see then but, but see then but, but see then be but then, about but then, it. The, then somebody on the other side is gonna have an issue with that and say, Well, this these, this group of people don't don't do that. They don't have to teach their kids that. But I'm like, you don't know what they teach the, their kids in their right. house. We only know what we teach our kids. We, need we to don't know care. what they teach. We we need we to take care we, of our house. We, exact, we know what we have to go through. So it doesn't matter what they're teaching them over there. What are we teaching ours? How are we how are mm -hmm. we making sure that ours come home every night? How are we making sure that our our next generation is able to go is able to create another generation? Because right now, how it's looking, the, the group of the kids that we have now, if they continue if the, how I see it is, we have kids raising kids that's about to start raising right. kids again. Because mm -hmm. that's how it's been for the last two to three generations. A kid at 16 and had a baby, now she finna raise this kid, and this kid is gonna get <coughs> 16 and is gonna have a, a kid. Yeah, I got. I have students. Some of the students in my class, their parents are my age, and I'm looking like. Yeah. Yeah. I have people of my age that are forty something. They got grand, grandma they now got, thirty nine, man. Yeah. Right. The, the what grandmothers are, you, what, what are forty. Can you, what are you teaching your? <coughs> what, what can well, you teach a child? But it, it used to be well, that it, it used to be that there was a paradigm to where if if something uh, out of order or something not beneficial happened, the community would rally, or somebody, not everyone, rally around that person, right? Mm -hmm. Now we all run away. Right. And then the other thing too that happens is, if that, I have a friend who's 37, 38, has two kids, had a kid when she was a baby, it was 15 or something, and, 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 and so she's made a life for herself, but you know, stop running away from people because maybe they made a bad decision or an inappropriate decision. Uh, again, if you're a Christian, you, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to think, talk about them disparagingly. You're supposed to lift them up. Lift it them says up. in Galatians, if the man falls down, you know, you make sure you, you, you know, you lift him back up. Make sure you know you don't allow him to try to. You try to encourage him not to make that same behavior. I'm just saying that at the end of the day, you know, we have to understand what you're saying, but we have to we have to be honest with ourselves. Like, how can I? How can I help? How can I make a difference? Because if everybody, if I just help one person. And you're a teacher. You have you have a different exp exponentially mm -hmm. effect, right? If I help one person, I've done my job. If I help right. one person move past move, but everyone everyone's so self-centered that I could just say, like I told a guy who's actually elected official not too far away, who you know, and I won't <laughs> say him because he's local. Um, but the guy says, I said, well, so and so, what's wrong for black elected officials? I said they only seem to do things sometimes that help them like white officials, I'm just saying black people in this case. He says, well, they got to make a living. And I said, well, if I was worried about that, I wouldn't be here making right. $10 an right. hour, three hours tonight. But I was trying to do something to help my community. Well, right? I, think, I think I think any any Everybody. person that goes into education is basically doing the same thing. I always tell, I always, I always tell people that for my age mm. and for how much no wealth of knowledge I have, I don't get paid enough no. to right. be an educator. 
right. for me to go back into a community into the community because I've ever since I got into education period since 2009 when I was in undergrad my my goal has been to go into the African American into the communities where I'm needed most where mm -hmm. I see kids that look like me I may not have gone through the same struggles as you but as long as you see my face and I understand yeah, something. your struggle yeah so in all honesty me taking that step and mm -hmm. if more people would take that step if our politicians could take that step I mean the ones that look like us because a lot of the times they get in office and they forget who put them there yeah um, and that's why I said a lot of the times we see that our our people have been voting Democrat for the last mm. 40 years, 60, 60, 60 for 40, 50, 60 years, yeah. and they still are in the same predicament because yeah. those people that they put in office are only there just like you said for what that guy for said. Them. Well, to, but you just remember, I just thought of a new term. It's called a bino. <laughs> it's black in name only. Uh, so a bino, B-I-N-O. I'm being facetious, but I'm dead serious. The point That's is, a, a bino. <laughs> That's a good one. Not a coconut, not an Oreo, none of those other kinds, but a bino. A bino. But a bi all I'm Black saying is, name on. because not you have. Not even a name, just in color. But, or sort have of, you? Sort of. I'm saying, people, like I'm from Maryland. You look at Baltimore, Baltimore ain't no better today than it was when I was in high school. That's 20 years ago. I didn't do my Lincoln Hikes plug yet. <laughs> well, 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 I know, Baltimore. <laughs> Utah and McMeckin, you know, Hill and Road, whatever. <laughs> it's but, all but, 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 the, but the whole, the, what all I'm saying is at the end of the day, you know, you, 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 you need to be, you need to demonstrate who you are by your actions. Everyone can help someone. If the, if the legislators don't go in and do what they're supposed to, we're what do you do? Any, what do you do with trash when the tra when throw trash, when trash, throw, throw the out. trash out? So if they're not doing their job, I don't care if their name is Kiefer Mitchell. That was a big family in Baltimore. It was the Mitchells. It was the Mitchells. It was oh, a big man. dynasty kind of family. <laughs> yeah. Kwasi and Fumi, former head of NBCP. Ben Jealous. I always thought that name was interesting or oh, whatever. <laughs> but but the, the the point is is like yeah. I'm, but the point is is like look, if you're not doing your function, if I go to work and don't do my job, I'm I'm out. What's going to happen? Out. I don't, it I'm might out. take a while. They're going to get rid of me. I'm out. If you're not doing your job. Get them out. Don't vote for anybody because don't come up and say, well, you know, I heard it on the Mike Lee show. I shouldn't. No. Mike is important. I'm important. He's important. But if they're not doing anything, you can plainly see that they're not doing anything. There takes no great level of cognitive, like, uh, acumen or nothing. You just know. You, you know a player spitting you game. So if the player spitting you game and you keep on voting for him, he go, he, you, he go, you play it yourself. Yeah. Fool me once. Well, and we, you, you what have we done for the last 30, 40, 50 years? We done played ourselves like an old song. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about last poets, n Negroes afraid, afraid of revolution. I'm talking about like some Ronald Isley stuff. Oh, yeah, you make smooth them over, make them feel good, stroke their egos, and just l they'll vote for you. And then at the you, end you of the day, from, from what, my what, you know. what, well, I know, but well, that, that's good <laughs> and bad. Like, that's but, what I said. That's but, what I said. In my article, it, sp it specifically speaks of the last 40, 50 years of politicians going into our communities and doing the exact same thing, smoothing you over, going into, you know, the probably the lower income places, yep. putting up, having a little big party, feeding the kids, shaking hands, kissing babies, and, oh, that that's a good guy. He, he oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and then you right. vote for him, and then it's like. And, and I'm not even saying you don't necessarily go vote. You, that maybe you'll vote for that person that first time because you think it's a good guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. But if, 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 if it comes up two or four years later, uh, let's say and the mayor of Baltimore, and, and, and you see that it's not happened, or even to your point of the, the talented tenth, the only problem mm -hmm. with talented tenth is that it divides people. So you have this elite, but it's still, but it's still divisive. Said, that's why I said it's, it's a very it's, divisive it, it, it's still, way of thinking. It, exactly. And so I'm like, if they don't, you, whether you vote for them or not, okay. But be discernment. Use discernment. We cannot, we, we, we cannot afford to lose a generation because my daughter may be doing fine, but that doesn't mean somebody else's daughter or son isn't doing fine. And because you're not doing fine, then I'm not doing, doing fine. Right, right, because right. I'm not going to say it like you do. I was like, Mike, could you okay, tighten up that phrase a little bit? But, <laughs> but, 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 but it's important. What, the, the, the black community is a bellwether economically, socially, or morally for the country. When we were enfranchised, then what happened? The, the country changed, it prospered, everything opens up. Now that we've kind of lost politically, what's happening? Everybody else has lost. All this kind of right. ruckety muck is happening. You know, one of the things that concerns me on the, on, the, on the political side of the house is that 
One of my frequent guests, one of my favorite guests, actually, is Rob Muhammad. I'm sure you guys at some point will probably meet him. Maybe one day I have a show. Texas and Power Mechanic, right? right? But, uh... Yeah, te- he's, a, he's over the Texas and Power Mechanic, right? Yeah, he's over the Texas yep, and Power yep. mm-hmm. Go ahead. And he runs the Black Trash School. And so, uh, you know, some blacks think that, well, it's about economics. We spend, I think Robert's thing is kind of, what he said was good for the black community, good for the community, it's good for the black community, good community, good for America, which is good for the world. That's Robert. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's a focus on trying to do it e- through economy. There's a role that politics can play, and I think it's a very important role. I mean, I was in college. I thought the, politi- the, part of the reason for politics is to be able to protect us. We've been able to gain economically. Mm-hmm. And, but we can use our political strength to benefit us economically. But we're not doing so, especially supporting crap like Planned Parenthood, which the CBC does 100%. If, 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 if you are betting on a race and you're a better and you only bet on one horse the whole time, then you're going to lose half the time, 30% of the time. Law of averages say if you just only bet on one party. There's old saying and about I'm not a one-trick in, pony. I'm not going into the, I'm not going into the, the, the plan parahood yet, valid point. I'm not going into faith, valid point. I'm just saying if you're just thinking a regular kind of logical, deductive process occasionally, then you say, hey, we need to be diversified. Uh, but, and I never it's understand that, that about the black washed. community because we always tell our kids or we always tell people, don't put your, don't put your eggs don't in one basket. Don't put your eggs in one basket. Your grandma but will tell you that. we do it all the time. Okay, that's a do as I say and not as I do. Because you're like, okay, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You need to, you need to, you need to make sure you have other that's options. That's a slave mentality. But, but we steady put our eggs in one basket when it comes and to the And keep political. losing. And keep losing. Because I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm honestly trying to figure out what has the last two, you know, Democratic presidents really, 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 really done for the African American community. Because last time well, I checked, the nothing. Democrats just had the option to, to, to vote in the African American, even though he was a Muslim man, and they decided to go and put in the Hispanic. Um, nothing. Um, well, outside of sentencing guidelines and making us feel good. What, what have been uh, they, the most, uh, most, black, most, n- nothing. Most black people, that 80, 88 to ninety-eight percent that vote that votes Democratic, you've been brainwashed. I mean, I just tell it. And you know, I say it on Facebook. I tell them, you've been brainwashed. If you put a frog in a in some water and slowly heat that water, do you know that frog will stay in that water until he is cooked to death? Because he he's already, he's been that's and that's what's happening that's in the him. black community. Well. They just well, didn't cook the dinner. And what I see, how I see it is, you're only there until they, until they no longer need you. Because right now, at, at one point in time, you were their biggest minority. Right now, right. the Hispanic community is becoming the biggest minority in you, the you nation. Didn't play, you didn't so, play it out. So now it's like, well, we right. really don't need them but, as much as we used to, but we go kind of keep them around but, but, until. But, right. but, but, but that's why you have the, uh, that's why, uh, what's the proper phrase? That's why if you keep people in a state of grievance, Right. Agreements. Oh, they bad. Master Uncle Charlie gonna come down. Uncle Master Trump gonna get us. He a bad man. He hit us. He just. We thought he. Somebody said. Don Cheadle said he might have said a bad word at some point. Okay. If, if you're only if you're only looking at it from a standpoint of I'm upset and I'm pissed. When you're again, we started with this earlier. If you're acting in an emotional manner, and I'm not saying because we all do. Uh, if you're acting emotionally, then you're not thinking critically. If you're not thinking critically, you don't make the proper. You don't make the most educated judgment in regards to a political, economic, or social condition. But, but, but this is where you need to get them. Lyndon B. Johnson goes on tape and on record of saying well, the N-word how many dang times? Well, but, yeah, what, but, but, what, yeah, what, but what did he say? But what did he say in the back end of that? Well, but, but, but that's what I'm trying what to get What did he say? They they what did he say? They said 60 years? Yeah. No, he said longer than 200. that, brother. And, and by the way, just for sake of clarity, I went to the LBJ school. Anyway, I did. But the whole point is. That's people, where your graduate degree is from, uh, right? Yeah, I'm edu- I'm educated. <laughs> you educated? <laughs> yeah, but I'm educated. So some people that don't like me think I'm educated. But the point is, is that <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm being facetious again. Because sometimes <laughs> the humor is the point at which you get in the truth. Right. Yeah, so while you're joking, they, you're getting in something you really want to get in. <laughs> right. um, uh, and enjoying yourself. But the whole point is, he knew 
that that, that the Republicans actually played a part in getting that legislation passed. Mm -hmm. He knew that the Dixocrats, which some people debate, became Republicans and all this, blah blah blah, blah that they they impeded it. So, but but if you're thinking, all you think is they did us a favor. No, fool, he didn't do us a favor. And John oh, Kennedy okay. wasn't supporting any Voting Rights Act. Lyndon Johnson didn't really support anything until he was president. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I'm not saying they're bad people, and I went to the policy school, right? I went there. I fed that stuff all day, every day for two years. Think critically. Work for your people. That's all you got to do. When you work for your people, you'll go and do things that you're doing. You'll go in and do what I'm doing or you're doing. Everybody plays a part. It used to be my grandfather was an analog porter, and, and, and he might not have had a lot of money, but they always taught them something, and they always helped somebody else. So by him just being consistent, it opened up gate doors for his children. And so it didn't matter if you're educated. I didn't have to have a master's degree to have any sense. It only mean or care about my community. The degree is relevant, but the commitment is necessary. Right. If you ain't got no commitment, the degree ain't going to mean nothing to well, you. And that's why I think this generation okay, loses got, all the time. I got one minute. Okay, I, I got my announcement about, about your speaking Wednesday already, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. I, I, just, I did that earlier to make sure I didn't mess it up. I want to invite the audience to watch my other shows that are available online on the Right Talk with Mike Lee. I especially enjoyed episodes five and nine. I believe I had Robert Muhammad on the, the, at that time, and then the other one I had Ken Thompson on, oh, who's the one who introduced me to this book. Kenny, well, I try to show you radio book show we got on started. KAZI. Yeah, Kenny Thompson. I like to give my, my folks the plug, and uh, we didn't get to talk about uh, Black Pack and and and. and uh, MLK, mm -hmm. but you'll be hopefully you'll be back oh, on yeah, the future. Yeah. Maybe you won't have to make that drive. I can bring you. I can have you piped in on. Okay.